welcome to Coffee and Words, where we wing it until we die, folks. <laughs> That's what we're doing. You have a video prepared. I do for me to see and I don't know what you're about to show me. So I'm <laughs> well, okay. So on two broadcasters, which is a podcast you do with Lori Day, which is great. We'll put a link in the description. You guys a while back, I think it was in June. I had it up here a minute ago, did an episode about AI art. And you and I yes. have talked a lot about AI art and it's a really good episode. Um, you cover all the like pros and cons and all the things that people are thinking about it. And you and I have talked about it a lot and I'm not going to say a whole bunch. I want to play this video. Um, it is an interesting take that I just recently saw. Um, Sinead Bovell is a futurist. She owns a company. I'm, I'll, I'll put a link to her channel below as well into this episode. Has on another sort of futurist person visionary, uh, Alexander Manu. I think that's how you say that. I don't know. Um, but I thought his takes were really interesting. So I thought we should discuss them. So I'm going to pop this up here and we'll just see how it goes. All right. When it comes to AI art and just knowledge in the age of AI, there's a tendency to feel like we are losing some of our humanity to technology, that in some way our humanity is depreciating as we give up more of our skills and our passions to tech. Is that true? Are we losing some of what it means to be human or is AI just changing what it means to be human? Well, this is a crisis that comes usually from people that don't like technology to begin with, or they are afraid of technology, or they never understood the role technology played in civilization, right? So we are Homo Faber, the, the making man, and Homo Ludus, the playing man. Combine these two things, we're going to play in a different way. And we demonstrated in thousands of years of our history that we know what to do with technology. Am I losing my humanity? No, I'm becoming more human. How? Uh, I'm removing all the chores. I'm removing all the chores. I'm giving my chores away to technology, to what I to what we call technology, but it's actually an extension of our will. We created that technology. That technology is as much part of nature as you and I. It is a form of nature. That's the most interesting part about it. The buildings that you look at outside the window, they're a new form of nature, maybe a second nature, but we can't deny they exist. So they transform everything. Now, so that's the first piece that I thought was really interesting. This idea that technology offloads chores. You know what I'm saying? When you think about every yeah. human innovation and that by offloading chores, it makes us more human. It gives us back that time. That's something that I think that people are missing in the AI art conversation. Everybody's hyper-focused on is it theft? Is it going to replace this job? Is it going to replace that job? Yes, it will replace jobs. There's no question that it will replace jobs, yeah. but it will also replace chores. And are those chores by themselves important? Like the other, the analogy he doesn't use that I thought of immediately was like, when you think about the entire history of humanity, what it meant to be a woman were the tasks that we did, like a huge part of what it meant to be a woman. You might get up and spend a large portion of your day going to the well or the stream to get water for your household, right? And cooking and caring, tending to clothing, tending to whatever the things are, right? And those tasks sort of defined us. And Which when in those self is a problem, when yeah. you, that's where the stereotypes maybe come from with, you know, oh, this is what women do. This is what men do. When even throughout history, you had women warriors and you had men who were, you know, still helping within the home. I mean, there's, you know, mm -hmm. it's, but we get these defining roles that everyone's kind of at odds with now that become hot button issues, but that maybe that's where that comes from too. Right. And it isn't that there's anything wrong with those tasks by themselves, but I think that 
to say that that is what defines you, it isn't. And I think right. every automation that is created, if it's used correctly, gives time back so that then a decision can be made, how do I choose to spend my time? And I think that's kind of where he's driving at. Like by not having to add mud to the walls of our house, we have gained that time back, right? To, to keep it warm or whatever. That's no longer a task most of us have to do. Although I have a lot of house chores that are kind of <laughs> driving me nuts right now. But like right. it used to be maintaining the structure that you were living in was a huge part of your life, right? It would be something that you would have to constantly do. We get time back by the automations that we have innovated and they are part of part of our move forward, I guess. Well, true. And I also think that, especially in the realm of art, uh, it, it forces us to work harder. And I think it the one thing about AI is it's going to wake us up a little bit and not allow so much, I don't want to use the word laziness because that, that has a different connotation, but it is easy, I think, sometimes to relax a little. And we have, mm -hmm. we've all been used to the way things have gone and, and whatever your art form is. And so if AI comes in and changes things, and now we feel like maybe we're in danger of this or that, regardless of how true something is, it kind of wakes you up. It makes you work a little bit harder. And I think that creates more of that humanness because now it's like, okay, I've got to make sure that what I'm doing in my art form is something that can't be replicated by an AI. And AI can only go but so far. How much am I putting into my work? Am I just doing the minimum to get by because I can? And mm -hmm. Or am I really focusing on this thing that's a passion of mine and, and reinventing those passions? And then if you got kind of stagnant, maybe, you know, I think the idea of um, really being re-inspired um, and see, being able to look at the world differently and just, I, because we're going to have to move forward in this. It's not going anywhere. Right. I do worry about when we start to say tasks, I mean, there's the daily mundane, minute tasks. Maybe it helps me out on a, a program I'm using on my computer or something like that. Maybe it helps me on my daily scheduling. But then when we start talking about tasks where people are working with their hands and jobs that are you know, limited because of that. And now they're even talking about um, robotics in the future with AI that can do like the job of a, a plumber or an electrician or things like that. Um, so my son who works in this field, he stays pretty on top of AI. So we had a conversation the other day and he showed me this video. I was like, what? And so, and now who's going to want a robot to come in their home and fix their plumbing? I don't know that I don't know. Can it be here now? Because I have a plumbing problem. That oh, I man. Well, he goes, well, you saw iRobot, didn't you? And I was like, okay, yeah, but I'm not letting that thing in my house. Like, that's scary. I don't know. It but is. I guess I'm still on the, the fence of we have people, we have humans who work with their hands, who have a trade, a skill, who enjoy what they do. Are we going to limit that? Are we going to push people out and bring more tech in? Or is there a happy medium? Is there a merging that will not kind of push people off to the wayside? I think that, I think that it comes down to the fact that you have decisions that you can make. Like let's take bread baking, for example. Um, it used to be if you wanted your family to eat bread, you had to make bread. And making True. bread takes a long time, yeah. right? Now we can just go to the store and we can buy a loaf of bread. I make bread from scratch very often. And so do you, right? And so yes. that is a choice that we have made to continue to do this thing that takes time and uses our hands. And that is by itself more valuable. If you find a loaf of hand-baked bread, it's going to be worth a lot more than what you get manufactured in a factory. And True. so I think the same is going to be true for art. It isn't that those things are going to completely replace, but like, for example, I have a toilet that needs to be fixed. If a robot can come in and do this repetitive task in, um, fixing this toilet, I mean, it doesn't take, it's the same thing, right? You come in, you do this thing. Um, somebody who is in that field they then are freed up for a lot of the more, the things that require human 
intervention, like the, the skill that it takes to design how something is going to be the problem solving, right? They're not, they're not doing the tasks. They're doing the things that only humans can do. And I think we identify that like only humans can make a hand loaf, handmade loaf of bread, right? That cannot Unless be you get a bread baking robot. <laughs> I don't know that a bread baking, I mean, we'll see. I don't think a bread I, baking, that, I mean, though. I have I would... a bread machine. It doesn't, but it doesn't yeah. do what a human can do. And I think that the arts are going to be the same. I think there's going to be a significant distinction between art that can be done by AI and art that can only be done by humans. And that's going to drive up the value of art that can only be done by humans. That's true. And, but I do, you know, um, on the episode of two broadcasters, we did talk a little bit about the using the likeness of someone's voice or face and, mm -hmm. um, how being able to use, so, um, just, I don't na name a, name a musician or a singer off the top of your head. Bono. Anyone. Okay. So, so Bono, let's say, um, you know, whatever they've used it, they have his voice, they've, they've got so many recordings of his voice and now they can go and they can record or make an entire track with Bono. Bono wasn't even in the room. Absolutely. So, I, you know, and so there's a lot of um, pushback, I think, against things like that but and actors' faces. And what is it we complained about for decades? I mean, some of us, probably Gen Xers more than anybody, maybe boomers. We've complained about the death, the slow death of things that happen in person, of, of live things, and we're particularly complaining about it now. Think about the value of live interactions in the future. Of actually yeah, going here, well. an actual musician right in front of you, right? And, and as more people rely on AI, as more people rely on AI, the more rare those skills will be. Because if you can That's have a machine play yeah. out music for you, and you don't have to play it, and you can have your likeness fingering the guitar for the music video then the skill that it takes to actually do that. I mean, in every year, you know, fewer and fewer people learn musical instruments, fewer and fewer people learn are learning a lot of these skills. So that just drives up the value of it. So I think, I mean, and there are a lot of problems with AI. I'm not trying to say they're not like, I right. am not, not, I don't want to talk about that. Like I, that's been well covered. Like there are plenty of times that AI art is literally theft. I get that. Right. There right. the deep fake situation you guys touched on, that is concerning for the future of yeah. humanity. There are a lot of problems with AI. But I'm just very interested in this what this guy has to say about um how it interacts with what it means to be human and how it potentially yeah. is a positive thing for our future. So let's listen to just a little bit more and yeah. we'll stop it here in a minute. if I can remember how to go back to it. There we go. <laughs> how am I becoming more human? If I'm removing chores and I don't have to vacuum my floor, I have more time to contemplate. I'm not gonna say think, because thinking is a different thing. Thinking has an objective. Contemplation doesn't have an objective. Contemplation is what humans do par excellence if they understand what being human is about. And that's Aristotle. So Aristotle wrote about this, the purpose of action is contemplation. So if Aristotle had artificial intelligence to help him write. What an idea, wow. Does that make him less human? Is it less sacred, less beautiful? Or is he more human with an AI tool? He will, be ex he will excel. Mm -hmm. He will excel. So the, I wrote about AI when I was starting using both InfraKit, no, uh, GTP3 and uh, mid-journey, I wrote that it is an invitation to improve. So to me, that's what AI is. Artificial intelligence is an invitation to improve. Yeah, it's an invitation to improve. So that goes back to Aristotle, Plato, all of this. Mm. All of these amazing people, imagine what they could have been today. And I think... Actually, that's the best way to think about technology. Yeah. Imagine what Aristotle, imagine Michelangelo. With an AI. With an AI. Or imagine Michelangelo on Mid Journey. Yeah. And I think with, with AI art, it's changing how humans relate to ourselves. I think up until this point, we believed that creativity was uniquely human. And now we're realizing it can be synthesized. And in the words of Kevin Kelly, 
creativity can be separate from consciousness. And you know, in your words too, knowledge is being changed. We're not losing it, it's just being changed. And so I think going through all of that, there's a tendency for us to reject it originally until we accept. Well, we have to disclose where. So I don't know that I agree with that. <laughs> Which part? Um, that the, the notion, first of all, and, and I don't know where AI is going in the future, uh, how far it will get if we're, you know, around for a thousand, 10,000 more years, whatever. Um, but the notion that AI itself is creative or can be creative, I think that that is a uniquely human thing. Right now, AI is a regurgitator and I am not an expert in the field, uh, never will be. So I, I only know the limited amount that I know, um, about it. But right now, it is a regurgitator. The system has to be fed in order for it to cre do its creations and do what it's doing. Um, and it learns. It, I mean, you do have different levels of artificial intelligence, and you do have there's learning capabilities within that. But you know, I think there are just things, and we talked about this on the episode of Two Broadcasters, that humans can do that that AI, I don't think ever will be. Of course, again, I don't know how scary the future is going to get with, with AI. And I think that creativity is a uniquely human thing um, with the human brain and consciousness and mind and soul and fill in all those blanks. I think it is a very special thing. I think it's a very spiritual thing. And so... I think creativity is something, uh, it's just like we will never fully understand the human mind, like the brain. We are still learning so much about brain and brain capacity and intellectual capacity and, and neurons and all, how all these things fire and operate. I think creativity falls in that. And um, again, I'm not an expert on AI, but I think that, I don't know that AI can do what humans can do. And that's where I find a safety net. But again, I could be proven wrong in that. So. But here's the question that people are not asking, I, that I don't hear. I'm sure there are people asking it because I, I found this video and, you know, I'm sure there's more people out there having these conversations in a positive way. But the question that I don't hear a lot of artists asking in their conversations about it is, is it a useful tool? Because when you think about what creativity is, like God creates out of a vacuum. That's it. I like people think that creative people create out of a vacuum. We don't. Creativity comes from putting things together in a new way. But those right. things are there to begin with. Right. You're, you're, all the information that you have taken in, every movie that you have watched, every book that you have read, every scene that you have looked at, every picture, every painting, every place you have traveled, every object, every idea, all of that is floating around in your head. And creativity is taking all of those things um, and turning them into your own version of the thing. But it's not creating That's a thing true. out of a vacuum. That's it's so not saying, true. let there be light and there is light. It's not right. saying, I want to make a this and there is a this. That came from something. And that's literally the same thing that so AI we're regurgitators. Is doing. So we are, this is a great point. I'm glad you're bringing this up. This really is something to ponder and think on. So really, I mean, it's, you're 100% correct that our experience, our perceptions, what we've viewed, what we've seen, what we've done, what we have, you know, all of these things, and it changes over time. So we are gathering information. We are gathering things throughout our life that is impacting how we think, how we live, and and, and our art, what we create. And then also maybe even our, our leanings, what, you know, uh, what genre of something we like. And our, our personality plays a part in that too. But we have experiences, I think, that kind of craft those those sections of, you know, what I, yeah. I'm going down this path because I was inspired by something or because something happened to me. So I think that's a great, um, I haven't really thought of that, I don't think, in great detail. That's a good one. So then the question is, how does it work as a tool to benefit our creativity? How does it work as a tool to partner with us in our creativity? I recently, um, I recently created a piece of marketing that I'm getting ready to print um, for a business, and I heavily utilized Adobe Firefly, which is Adobe's AI art synthesizer, whatever you call it. 
uh, generative art. And Adobe Firefly um, is open, like everything that they use is public domain, first of all. Like they are trying very hard to be ethical as they evolve this technology. But the work is beautiful. And it allowed me to create something in a very short period of time. In fact, I'll show you, let me see if I can do this, if I can show you one of the um, pictures, maybe if I put it over here, hold on. I can show you one of these pictures, hold on. Uh, All right, well, while you're doing that, I'll just say that um, I think it's a great way to view AI. And I've said this before too, um, it's not going anywhere. It's not leaving us. So it is the future. We have to find a way to work with it. We have to find a way to live in a world where it exists because it's not going anywhere. So I think if we look at it as a tool to help us, and that also keeps it in check because just like humans need to be kept in check, you know, we need to check ourselves daily, you know, yeah. um, we need to keep um, AI in check and, and how we do that. Again, it's like what he said and what I was saying earlier about it challenging us to be more active, be more proactive, to be more conscious of things and, and to work harder. And I think it is, it's a challenge. It, it should challenge us. And that's a good thing because we become stagnant so easily and we need, especially human beings need challenges because otherwise you just kind of walk almost zombie-like through life. You know, you've got all these tasks we're used to doing and we go through so robotically some days, you know, it's like you're ever driving in your car, Jill, and you know where you're going, but you, you turn left yeah. and go down this road over here instead of going straight because you're so used to doing that. Maybe every day you turn left and go to this one place and you're just, you know, in your head, whatever. Yeah. And you're like, why did I turn down this road? That's not where yeah. I'm going. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. I, and I think taking back like the, the decision making, we are making decisions about how to engage with everything that we engage with. And this idea that we, um, we can't utilize these tools to help us be better, to help us grow, I think is, is wrong. So let me show you, let me show you what okay. I've been working on here. Uh, there we go. Okay. So I created, um, I created these little like realtor cards. This is for an insurance agency. Um, and I put little notes on top of it and I worked with the AI art basically to come up with some really just interesting pictures. Okay. Well, um, I want to live in that little wool cottage. I know, right? <laughs> the first one. And you know, I tried oh, to man. find pictures that I could even buy that were like these pictures and I couldn't. I right. I couldn't that. find, doesn't that look great? It's like those belting <laughs> videos. Have you ever watched this yeah, it's a house videos made of on Instagram? Oh, oh yeah. Man. So this is, this is my creativity. This was my idea. I had to come up with 12 of these. It's for a calendar and I had to come up with 12 of these and I had to work with, you know, try to find prompts oh, I love that. that would work, that would give me what I needed. And I was able to do it super fast. And then I could go in and I could tweak the image and then I could go in and I put all of these other things around it, all of like the wording and things like that around it. That looks edible. And so it does. And so like an it just created, <laughs> yeah. So I just created like some really interesting things and I wouldn't have been able to do this without AI art. And I just want to stress that. And I am an artist. Like, yeah, I am not someone who artist. can't, but it would take me at least a year to come even close to replicating some of these images. And that felt house, I couldn't. I don't, yeah, I could I make it out of felt people. and then I could take a photograph of it, but it still wouldn't look like that. Right. It just and for wouldn't. People who don't know you, Jill, because you know you're usually behind the scenes on coffee and words. Um, for people that don't know Jill's art, and and I'm I'm gonna you know I'm gonna dote on you for a minute. She <laughs> she is a, a fantastic painter, sculptor. She's very very talented. She makes cosplay um, from nothing, literally from trash. She makes these items that look store-bought, but, but I, you know, she's got some extremely beautiful paintings and things. So you're very talented. And all of that is to say that here you are an artist who knows your craft, who you're constantly challenging yourself and you're trying new things all the time and you love being hands-on, but you're using this AI art. You have found a way 
to let it help you do some of the things that you need to accomplish. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's the tool part of it is if we can answer the question, is it a tool? And if it is a tool, how can it be used? And obviously each of the categories, deep fakes, ethics, those are the two big ones that are, that are serious. Like if you are regenerating someone else's work and then putting it out there as your own work, that's theft. That's always been theft, right? It was theft. It was theft when it was done decades ago and it's theft with ARR. And obviously that's right. true. But if you can set that aside and just say, even as a writer, like I did a thing recently, we, um, we sometimes play, do role-playing games with our family and we have another family that we played with. So I was trying to create a one shot, which is a one evening event with a role-playing game. This happened to be My Little Pony. Um, it's a My Little Pony role-playing game where you pick your pony, you create your pony, it doesn't matter. But okay. a one shot is where you just create one little event that everybody comes, they play this little game and then they go. And it's a story. Well, I had chat GPT give me a whole bunch of options for, for one shot stories for a My Little Pony world. Uh oh. And I didn't end up using it exactly, but it allowed me to just browse through a whole bunch of ideas that may not have occurred to me. And then I took those ideas and I iterated on that and I created my own thing. But as a writer, like if creativity is reforming things from ideas that we have all around us that we have put into our brain, that's why artists talk about their visual library. You have to cultivate your visual library. You have to cultivate yeah. what you take in. And probably as an author, it's the same thing. You have to cultivate yeah. the things you think about, the things you understand, the, the, the ideas that you take in, because that's what you're drawing from. Yeah. What you, you consume is what you become. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's an idea that, that we use in multiple areas of life where we talk about to kids and, you know, be careful, you know, about various things because, you know, and so, yeah, it's, um, it, that is the, one of the truest statements I've heard today or this week so far i would say, <laughs> you know what i mean like i'm just sitting here going like that's a deep truth like what we consume is really what we become and so yeah, it is yeah yeah it is absolutely and so as a tool if it can add things to that visual library if it can give you a whole bunch of choices that you then take and make your own as if you are a creator if you are a creative person it works out really well um, and I think it's only going to get better as a tool. And so I think, I mean, you have two choices moving forward as, as a creative person, whether it's a writer or an artist or whatever, obviously, I mean, sculpting even, you know, we've got 3d printers that just get better and better and better. So yeah. I, I don't even know, like modeling may become, I mean, I think, I think there's, I think every industry is going to be impacted. Because we yeah. thought this industry, we thought creative industries would not. I am, I was shocked at how fast AI was able to create art. Yeah. I mean, I just and wasn't, I didn't think we were there yet. Like, I feel like we jumped from A to Q and <laughs> yeah. skipped B, C, D, E, F. I, I was we, very surprised. We went from Little House on the Prairie to iRobot in <laughs> like you know, <laughs> three <did>. seconds. <laughs> Zero to 60. How did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. But, um, you know, and, and I've talked about, I talked about this on the show with Lori. Um, I, I've talked about this in conversations with people. Um, as an author, you know, and, and for anyone who's writing stories, um, writing wh whatever, you know, kind of in the writing world that you're doing, um, there, especially with fiction, the, the human element, that personal experience, that perspective, the things that you have been through in your life that give you, it's like when you are relating in a story, something that a character is going through, your word choice and descriptions and the atmosphere and the environment and the world that you're you're building in that moment is based off very real human experience. And people resonate with that. So that's why we connect with stories and with characters because we understand what they're going through. Or we can we can get it. We can see it. We're like it, it clicks something clicks within us. Something that we have 
either seen or heard or experienced ourselves, or we know someone who's been through that. And so then we draw closer to that because it's a very personal experience. So storytelling is very personal, whether it's writing or, or painting or, or whatever, music. And so I, I wonder how close AI will ever get to replicating that, because I don't think it can right now. I mean, it can do a great job of telling a story, I'm sure. It can come up with some really cool things. But to really connect on that personal level, to really, that, that emotional experience, because there, there's an emotionality in storytelling where I'm relating to you something very deeply personal, even if I don't realize it or not. Mm -hmm. and, and that human connection element, I think, is key for storytelling in all forms, but especially in writing. And it's why we resonate so much with books. It's why we may not click with some books and we're going to really click with others. Like we couldn't put it down. We're up to 3 a.m. We're crying. We can't wait to turn to the last page, you know. And um, I just wonder if AI will ever get there. And I, if it doesn't, I mean, we always have a part and a place, but then we can use it for task building, like you said. I think that, I mean, I think that we will always, although I don't know, did you see the recent, not to tangent, because uh -oh. we probably should be wrapping this up, <laughs> but there was a recent, I want to say it was a study, I don't know, it was just an experiment where people recognized AI faces as more likely to be real than real faces. Did you see that? I did not. And so I think that like <laughs> the reality is night, night, it is night. inevitable. And this is another show. We need to come back to this because I think the acceptance of what is inevitable and adaptation, like are you willing to adapt and grow and realize that the world moves forward and you cannot stop things from changing. You can still make right. choices like I bake bread because it's healthier, but you cannot stop the fact that, that once technology comes out, it's there. So right. AI right. that can track, track every micro expression of your face, AI that can track every hesitation in your voice, every inflection, like it's going to get better and better at that. Can yeah. it also learn how to evoke that? It's a right? great How to question. play that, how to, right? Because the Adobe Firefly AI art, and I haven't spent a lot of time studying how, how they have developed it, but it knows how to make a good picture where I've played around with some of the other AI generators, um, mid journey and things like that. And like a lot of times you're not getting a good picture. And so it's learned what makes a pleasing image. And then it right. gives you that it gives you a pleasing piece of art. So can it also do that with story and fiction? I don't know. Well, I think, you know, if it challenges us to evolve as humans um, in a way that we can differentiate and that we can look at things differently and that we can move forward. Again, it's, it's all about not stagnating. It's too easy mm -hmm. to just stay in our little comfort zone. We are going to have to get out of that. We're going to have to move forward. It may not yeah. be comfortable at all times, but yeah. we're gonna have to find a way, like you said, to adapt. And, and to evolve and to move with what's happening. And it doesn't mean that it, it has to be in a specific way. We can still make choices. Well, I yeah. choose to move with it in this way. And this person over here is going to take a different path. But it's, we still have to keep going. We can't, yeah. you know, we can't sit down, you know, and la, 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 la. I'm not moving and you can't make me. <laughs> That's right. We can't fight against it and you can't really stop it. I mean, you really can't. But I think what from a storytelling standpoint, what the AI can't do is it can't tell your story. What it can't do from an art perspective, and we talked about music, it point. can't play your song. Like in physical, and I think a lot of people are gonna be okay with that. But that guitar playing robot is coming for you, Jill. <laughs> but what we have to realize is a lot of people are gonna be okay with that. Like a lot of people are okay with that now. Mm -hmm. They're okay with removing that human element. But I think that there will be a choice between just going along with what everybody accepts as this is what we do now, or going to a live show and hearing live music, going to a live person and saying, this is their story. 
this is from a human and I want to know what that human thinks and feels. I don't just want to be entertained for a few minutes. I've got this on my desk. I'm just looking at this thing on my desk. This was made by my nephew, Jonathan. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. It's little pieces of broken glass. It's a candle holder. You, I, AI can't do that. Like AI is not going to be able to make something that exists that is clearly made by a human hand. Like, so I think we have a choice yeah. in the future to lean in toward actual human connection and then to use it as the tool that it is for the things that we, we want to create. Yeah. And I would say too, that even let's go worst case scenario. Let's say AI can do everything a human can do and it just takes over everything. Right. Okay. Let's you know, go to the far extreme there. You know, maybe it helps us to appreciate each other more because we're, yeah. at that point, you're going to be missing something. You're going to be missing mm -hmm. that very human part of things. And you realize maybe you took something for granted and maybe we look at each other. You, you know, when you come in contact with a human, you go, wow, I, I miss, I miss this. Yeah. I forgot about humans. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and so even if you want to look at an extreme and you want to go off the deep end, I think it's, it's what he, and I hope it's what he was talking about when he said it challenges us or it should challenge us. And it's, it's right. really back to the idea from the very beginning of the show. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is challenging us to move in such a way that we, we not only grow, we gain something beneficial. Listen, since the dawn of all existence, there have been negative things. There have been all kinds of things that impact people in various ways. Things come about, somebody doesn't like something, something threatens something else, and you find a way around it. You find a way to exist with it, to move beyond it, to do whatever the thing is. And it's like, I think that maybe is something um, that is uniquely human. Maybe I haven't yeah. given this any thought. I'm literally coming off the cuff here, but you know, <laughs> AI is a program, it's software. And yes, it learns and it's going to get to a point where it can do a lot on its own, but it's still originated with, it had to be coded, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so I don't know, adaptability, I don't know. I'm thinking off the cuff. I just feel like there is something, no matter what AI ends up, do, you know, however, how far we get, whatever we're able to see in our lifetime, there is something about humanity and about being human that is very, very special. And the AI is never going to completely replicate. And I don't know if I can articulate what that is right now today. Um, cause I don't know where AI is going to go and everybody has different opinions on what makes humans human, but I think that we are a very special species and, um, I think we have a lot to offer with or without AI. I agree. So, and it'll be interesting to find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's, I highly recommend you watch the full episode that we played a little bit of and that you listen to the episode of two broadcasters that I mentioned at the beginning. We'll have links in the bottom. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thank you.